Hello, everybody, and welcome back yet again to another drum playthrough review. Thank you all for tuning in and stopping by. It's great to have you all here. And for everyone who's brand new, hi and welcome. My name is Nick. I'm a multi instrumentalist as well as a mixing and mastering artist. And the reason why we like to do videos like these is because it's great for us to take drummers who are better than us, legendary drummers at that, break down their technique into an easy to digest form so that way we can understand it a little better. So that way we can take that understanding, use it to our knowledge and to our advantage so that way we can become better musicians. So we've got an absolute legend today, and uh, it's kind of crazy because. I had planned to do this guy a little while ago, and I guess now is really the perfect time to do it uh, because of some news that just happened for this fella. So I'm sure y'all have heard of the absolutely phenomenal progressive act known as Dream Theater. Dream Theater is an absolutely incredible progressive metal act that has shaped the way that we know progressive music today and has really changed a lot of things and set the standard and set that bar for how progressive music should sound. Well, anyway, they used to have a drummer known as Mike Portnoy, and he was with the band for a long, long time. He was one of the founding members, and then he left the band in order to go pursue some other stuff. And so, you know, obviously it's no secret. There's a whole documentary about them finding a new drummer. Well, anyway, they ended up finding a guy by the name of Mike Mangini, who used to be the drummer for Steve Vai Live and a bunch of other places. Dude's an absolute phenomenon. He's got some record fast hands. Absolutely great. Insanely good energetic drummer. Well, anyway, uh, two days ago, I read the news that Mike Portnoy has rejoined forces with Dream Theater and that Mike Mangini is no longer with Dream Theater and that they've decided to go their separate ways. Kind of interesting news to come out of absolutely nowhere. And I've been planning to do a review on Mr. Mike Mangini for a little while now because the dude's got, like I said, absolutely record fast hands. And I just haven't gotten that chance to yet. Well, now is our chance to since apparently it's trending. <laughs> We're going to take a look at the absolute legend Mike Mangini today. He's doing a playthrough of The Alien, which is a song from Dream Theater. It helped to really like take off you know, their career into a really good path. It actually helped, I believe, for them to win a Grammy as well. But this little track is done a little bit different. This is actually sped up 110%. So the filming on this video is done at 242 BPM and the album track is at 220. So this is faster than the original song. And even though it's still faster than the original song, it's still nine minutes long for a playthrough. We're going to check out this man, analyze his technique, see what Mr. Mike Mangini has to teach us. Because like I said, dude's an absolute legend of a drummer. So let's, uh, let's dive into this really nice long video and let's see what kind of stuff we can learn from this man. All right. Without further ado, ladies and gents, let's get started with this review. So obviously filmed at 110% speed, so it's a 242 BPM, album track's 220. It's for tour preparation, he says. All right, let's get into it. Let's see what this cover is all about. So already we can tell this is fast. He's using an offset pedal as well. The offset pedal is very interesting because basically it's kind of like a double pedal, right? Like a regular, you know, double pedal, but instead of having, you know, the one unit directly with the uh, the main pedal and then you have a slave unit. They're both technically slave units. They meet in the middle with the beater system. Very interesting setup. So we already know we're going to have a lot of time signature changes, a lot of metric modulation, that kind of stuff in there, tempo changes, etc. We're already into weird time signatures as it is. Metric modulation right there. So it's 11.8 versus something else. 11.8 against something else, yeah. It's a lot of weird times, like I said. That's in 4.4. Four. He does a very good job supporting the solo. So yeah, it looks like he's using a combination between wrist and fingers depending on the speed and depending on what the subdivisions that he's having to play. Just from my observations. So 
So it's interesting that they have vocals. Usually they don't put vocals under a poster. So he's keeping very good time. He's very accurate. Insanely good speed. You'll notice that his power does kind of dip a little bit when he starts going faster, and there's reasons for that. That is because usually when you have to go faster, you have to sacrifice some power. And that's okay. Not a problem with that. Like, already, listen to the amount of weird time signature changes we got going on here. He's got a lot of interesting stuff going on here, because like a lot of the stuff where the vocals are overlaid on top of it, it's very chill, very nice and chilled out. But then when it starts to get into the more complicated instrumental parts, it's way more complicated, way more, you know, technical, way more progressive. And the reason for that too, I think, is because he wants to let the vocals kind of sit over top of that. He doesn't want to take the show because he wants to be able to focus on the lyrics, and that's cool. But then over instrumental parts like this, that's where he'll uh, let this shine out a little bit. See, already right here we got a polyrhythm. Like, this is just some insane drumming. And then we got another solo. Just pay attention, too, to how he supports the solos as well. He does a very good job supporting it. I know a lot of the stuff that he's doing right now as part of the counting. A lot of it probably more than likely. Because as drummers, we want to be counting when we're playing the song just because we want to keep on time. And eventually it gets to the point where it all becomes subconscious. I bet you a lot of the times when he's doing all this stuff, he's, he's counting in subdivisions of like two or three. Like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, like that. Mainly because that makes it way easier. Like, it's gotta be honestly kind of crazy thinking about how progressive of a style he's built. This comes from years and years of practice, by the way. This doesn't happen overnight. It takes a long time to develop a style like this.
so okay, it's a five stroke roll. He's keeping pretty loose. He doesn't look tense or anything like that. He looks very relaxed, but he's grooving out. Well, there's definitely a lot of stuff going on in this playthrough. I can't really tell from the angles that they've chosen, like what his foot technique is. It's probably full leg. Because he hasn't really played anything super crazy fast, so. Wow. That's an absolutely good job, my friend. Absolutely good job. He does a really good job playing the song. And I don't say that lightly. He does a fantastic job. Well, while he may not be in Dream Theater anymore, Mike Mangini still is an absolutely incredible, phenomenal, very well-versed drummer. Let's take a look at his technique now, why don't we? So first of all, he's using a lot of wrist motion on the slower parts, and then when it comes to the faster parts, he is using a lot more finger motion and whatnot. And that's ideal. Generally, you want to switch to smaller muscle groups like the fingers or anything like that when you are going into faster tempos, simply because it helps to save energy and whatnot, and you usually have a much faster twitch response with the smaller muscle groups. Now, not saying that you can't use wrist to go faster. You absolutely can. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you're not straining. It's just when you're looking into a little bit more of a uh, more economical way to play or even just a more economical play style, you generally want to try and switch to the smaller muscle groups when you're going faster to waste less energy. That's usually the plan that you want to achieve. I couldn't exactly tell what his foot technique was doing from that angle. I, I'm guessing more than likely it was probably just full leg motion more than anything. And again, there's nothing wrong with playing full leg motion. He wasn't doing anything super fast or technical or anything like that. He was keeping his feet mostly just like digga, 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 digga. And that's fine. That's fine. Just basically doing eighth notes the whole time. Absolutely nothing wrong with doing something like that. He's practicing the song for touring right? It's part of his touring warm up, but he's practicing it faster than what he's going to play live. This is good. If you can play the song 10% faster than you will live, then you know that you're going to nail it when you're playing it live. Because here's the thing, 10% faster might not sound a lot, but when the song's already at 220 BPM and you're raising it to 240 BPM, like 242 or something like that, that's a pretty big jump. It may not sound like a lot. It's only like what, 20 BPM or whatnot. Just for some, uh, just for some context, your heart beats anywhere is between 60 to 80 beats per minute resting when you're up, up and moving around and whatnot it can go anywhere from 80 to about 100 beats per minute think about how slow that is by comparison right now believe it or not your heart actually moves in a triplet pattern it goes da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, right so say for example you're going at a tempo of about one two three four one two three four dun da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. you may not notice it that much but if i was to say for example speed it up by about 10 p then 10 bpm one two three four one two three four dun da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. you're gonna feel that if it was a small increase even by about 10 bpm depending on the subdivision that's being played you're gonna feel that speed increase a whole lot more even if it seems like just a small gap in tempo and we bring up the heartbeat example for a reason because even if your heart's beating at another like 10 beats per minute faster you're gonna feel it a lot more it's gonna feel like it's beating much faster you're gonna feel the actual pressure going in and out of your chest from your heart moving around and palpitating so while it may not seem like a lot 22 bpm faster is quite an achievement especially if he's about to go play this live in front of people and he didn't miss a single note too in the song that's what's really good and this brings me to an excellent point actually sometimes when you're practicing songs if you're having trouble nailing it something that you can do that will actually help you and this is a little secret i hear drummers talk about this a lot and sometimes especially in the uh, more professional community if something's giving them a little bit of trouble when they're trying to learn a riff or whatnot they'll actually play it faster than the original or at least attempt to and then they'll come back down to like just a little bit below the original tempo and then try and play it and then they can usually nail it after that it's because it's all psychological sometimes when we're trying to play a song and we're having a little bit of trouble getting to that tempo or whatnot that it's at we're just not quite nailing it it doesn't sound very clean it's because there's a mental block there that we think that that tempo is just kind of impossible to achieve so if we set our threshold above the impossibility and we try and play it at that speed sometimes it helps to mentally just lower that threshold just a little bit so okay yeah maybe that tempo range that we're striving for in reality 
isn't impossible after all. That's something that you can always try out. Like, say, for example, if there's a certain song or anything like that that you're trying to learn and it's at a tempo that's a little bit awkward or it feels a little uncomfortable just because you're not either used to playing at that speed or it just is a little too fast for you. Within reason and without hurting yourself by straining or anything like that, try and speed it up a little faster than the original tempo and then play it at that speed. And then after one time of trying to play it, bring it back down to just a little bit below the tempo that it was recorded at and then try playing it and you'll notice that it's actually a lot easier to play that way. Believe it or not, there's actually a lot of these different little hacks that are out there that you can use that'll help you to kind of break those mental barriers in your drumming life and all that. And it can actually help you to increase and get massive amounts of uh, progress in a very short amount of time. But we'll save those for another video. So yeah, absolutely excellent job, Mike Mangini. Well done. Sad to see you're not with Dream Theater anymore, but I have faith that you're going to pick up a really good gig next. So you know what? Keep on trucking, my friend. Absolutely great stuff. And with all that being said, y'all, that's going to be the end of this video. So here's just a few things y'all can do to support me. So for one, you can like, share, comment, subscribe, all that really good stuff. You can check out the playlist I have with videos very similar to this and the links I have down below to my band page, my Spotify page, and the Instagram page from my band as well. And with all that being said, y'all, that's the end of this video. So thanks everybody for tuning in and stopping by. It's been great to have y'all here. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. So cheers and have a great night.